Good evening. I'm, I'm Stuart Brand from the Long Now Foundation. I'm curious, how many Long Now members are here? Yeah, noisy ones too, that's good. Uh, at the end of the show, come on up to the stage. We'll do the uh, member group photograph as usual. Um, this long slideshow of, of selfies that we had, um, there was one quote that kept appearing over and over until he got sick of it. But it has a bit of a story that, that might be relevant. It's, uh, I wrote some while ago, this present moment used to be the unimaginable future. But I wrote that as a mirror statement in answer to Gary Snyder had written me a couple years ago saying that he'd written an epigram saying, this present moment lives on to become long ago. Well, some of those long ago moments live on in film. And the very best collector and curator of that is Rick Prelinker. Thanks, Stuart, and thank you all for coming. Now, I can't see any of you, so how many of you have been to all eight shows before this? A handful. Okay. Um, look, uh, I think you know the drill. Um, Lost Landscapes, this is not just about the city that's gone. This is also about the city that we'd like to live in. I guess that's maybe the long-term thinking part. Um, especially important now as we're trying to figure out what this place should be, how it should look like, who should live here. Um, so think about that. Participate. I think you know the drill. There are no inhibitions. You are all groundlings in the Elizabethan sense. You are all rabble. Um, but you know, look, I wanted to say one more thing. Uh, so Lost Landscapes right now is a show here. It's a repeat show at Internet Archive on the uh, 19th of December. Please tell your friends there's still tickets left and it's a benefit for a great organization. Um, and occasional repeats here and there, and it lives on the web. But you know, it's also something else. I can't help but thinking, and it's really been, this feeling's been growing in me over the years, that when you get a bunch of people in a room that represent so many different communities, that it's very special. And I start wondering what else lost landscapes could be. You know, could it be an archive? Could it be community discussions? Could it be a more active part of our excellent local history community? And I'd love to figure out a way to get more people involved in hunting and in gathering and more people involved in outreach to the many, many San Franciscos that we know about and I don't have time to talk to by myself. And so, you know, I'm open to talking to people about this next year. I'm very easy to find, but if people have ideas or they have collaborations you want to suggest, let's do this and make the show kind of dig deeper, uh, deeper into the, the core of, of this city. Um, so look, all I have to say, um, enjoy yourselves, be loud, and thank you so much for coming.
It's about 1939. They are, in fact. Just so you're on the right flight. This is 1937-38, uh, don't know exactly. <laughs> Look familiar? You're looking at shrunken film, that's why it's a little jumpy, but maybe you can. And this is uh, opening day. And these uh, pictures are courtesy of the Bethlehem Steel Museum. And um, thanks to Peter Linenthal for making that connection. Potrero Hill Neighborhood History Association. What was the toll originally? 50 cents raised to 65 shortly after, something like that? A quarter originally, okay. A lot of money in the... <laughs> A little bit of brick, anti-skid. Treasure Island, still swampy. Key system mole. That's where you would, the ferry would take you on your train to the East Bay for those of you who haven't seen that before. Interestingly enough, they're already working on the, some of the buildings before the island is even filled in. So this is a rare uh, Hollywood outtake. Um, and this is Harrison Street. And here's one of the last, you're going to see in a minute, one of the last original Rincon Hill houses. Probably, a, I'm guessing, a post-quake house. Don't know. Uh, what year? I think the bridge is either finished or almost finished. About the same time as this, which is 35, 36, 37-ish.
We've entered the 40s, a little bit of home movie footage. I wondered how long that would be. So somewhere in this group of scouts is uh, Sam Ziegler, who's in the audience tonight, whose family shot this. And this is here because it just gives, there's the Autofred building in the background, just gives you a sense of every day outside the ferry building in the 30s. Where are they going, Sam? Boy Scout Jamboree. So this is about 1938, and I've never seen something so nice. Geary Street looking ahead. Painless Parker, the dentist, on the left. This is a home movie footage, 16 millimeter. Our busy waterfront. Anybody recognize what street we're on? Right, somewhere in North Beach. And here's the produce market before it became the Golden Gateway. It's a Hollywood background process plate thrown away by Columbia Pictures. Long story. Hang on.
You're applauding the Embarcadero Freeway. That was an outtake from the movie The Lineup, 1957. And then a little bit of home movie, and here's some more home movies from that 1940s role. Portsmouth Square. The old Hall of Justice. Portsmouth Square. Some of you have gotten to know this existential runner. hasn't changed much. Got a little bit of futurism. You know, it's right after the completion of the Embarcadero Freeway, so late 50s, I'd say. Some Montgomery block in there, if you look. Um, this is from, I think, Mark Hopkins. This is um, 520 Pacific. This is uh, Purcell's black-owned nightclub. And supposedly the first building built after the quake. And this is from about 70 or 71. <laughs> I've made this sequence family friendly. I'll just say that much. Romolo Place.
Royal Pacific is still in business. Upper market. Right, and we're coming coming inbound on market. This neighborhood has all the stuff they're trying to build now. <laughs> Twitter building. Coming down six. So this is a background process plate that was meant to be projected out behind a car window. You'd see people sitting in a cab, and in the back window this would be projected. But we're repurposing it as evidence so there's a few empty spaces that are uh, now filled in. And we're coming off of uh, Fillmore Street, I believe. So this is the daughter of the Hirota family. Um, Dr. Hirota was a dentist in the Western edition. And um, the home movie collection has a gap in the 40s when the Hirotas were um, incarcerated in camp. But there's footage before and there's footage afterwards. And this is just a, a little bit of their family life in the Western edition.
So uh, neighborhood fire. Again, this is somewhere, you know, I don't have a date handy. It's 38 to 41, probably. Yeah, I don't. Webster-ish, someone in, in the audience is suggesting we're near Webster Street. So the war is over. This is uh, uh, Dr. Hirota, and if you um, will look closely, he's wearing his army jacket, and he's got the patch of the 442, the most decorated <laughs> volunteer military unit in World War II, uh, Japanese-Americans who came out of camp. Um, old favorite, Revive, this was shot by uh, John Gorman, and it's a uh, little film he made, piece of a little film he made as a young man, and this is Laurel Hill Cemetery. I have never, I've only found one other piece of film footage of the cemeteries, so this is kind of unusual. For those of you who don't know, the cemeteries were by 1941, they were in the process of being removed. They were kind of derelict. Many of the graves had been uh, relocated to Colma. Um, but the land hadn't yet been taken over and redeveloped. Right, somebody in the Chronicle described that neighborhood as Trader Joe's Heights. and a little bit of uh, color footage that was part of the same shoot. Anybody recognize this? I just... We're at Aquatic Park in 1971. Right, some of these people have probably moved to the park.
All right, coming up on 100 years. So this film was put together, um, my guess is sometime in the, in the late teens or early 20s. And there's a much longer version of this that you can um, go online and see, but it doesn't look as good as this. And I tell you, in a minute, you'll see something that looks even better. But the crowds are incredible. Long march up Van Ness. A little dour. So all of these grand, grand buildings, only one of which still survives. If you're interested, go to the San Francisco Public Library sixth floor in the history room and look at the photographs of what this place looked like after the buildings were torn down. It's quite uncanny and amazing. Lots for sale. February, Palace of Fine Arts, the kickoff of the PPIE 100. So this footage has been years ago. It was transferred from 35 millimeter original to 16 millimeter. And then that was transferred to standard definition videotape. And there's a lot of it's gone through a lot of generations along the way. And um, most of the footage we see of the PPIE is, is beat up. It, uh, it shows the scars of its long life. Uh, I don't believe that the 35 millimeter on this still exists. I could be mistaken. Sort of a Venetian, isn't it? Except with submarines. <laughs> but some, um, we had a lot of uh, 35 millimeter material of the PPIE in our archives now at Library of Congress. And just this week, um, they sent some material that has been restored. And so I'm going to show you material that's never been seen outside the Library of Congress in a moment. But first, the lights.
there's a color version of this that's deteriorated, unfortunately. To repeat, uh, Strauss, who designed the Golden Gate Bridge, designed that. <laughs> so, um, newly restored material. This is the Liberty Bell, which was shipped from Philadelphia to San Francisco. <laughs> Crack and all. And it's, um, it's Escort to the fair. And I've included this not because perhaps it's the most uh, scintillating material in the world, but I want you to see what 100-year-old film can look like when it gets the, profession, the benefit of professional restoration. Anybody able to identify anybody? We are now in the 30s, and this is uh, Sam Ziegler's. Family Films, ROTC, parading, not far from Galileo. I think, I think this might actually be Galileo ROTC. What's that streetcar line? And we're at our airport, Mills Field, 1929, for an air show. And um, welcome to the Foreman family films. We have a, uh, a relative. <laughs> we have a relative in the theater if she has anything to tell us, but no obligation. They're extremely photogenic.
Here's a little more of SFO in a different era. Two gates. <laughs> Louder, Caitlin. We're, uh, I believe, we're on the Matsonia. About to leave for Hawaii. And you know what people do on boats. And um, a much earlier departure, I think this is a Ziegler family. We've got to get back in the habit of seeing our friends off. And this is more of the Foreman family films. I don't know where we're leaving from, but in a, you'll see where we're arriving. This is 1957. This is Lawton Street, the caterer. Rambler. And this is 70 or 71, and I think it's the Columbus Day Parade. The Castroville Artichoke Float. <laughs> Miss Tall California, or Miss Tall San Francisco. Shriners, I believe. So Hyatt Regency under construction. And then as now, Justin Herman Plaza.
Don't know much about this footage. It turned up in an estate sale, but it's beautifully shot. So SOS refers to an effort to, um, to prevent a, uh, a ship that was the Coral Sea that was home ported in Alameda to, um, to sail to Vietnam. This is again, this is I think 71. This has been redacted. <laughs> so the Riding Academy on 7th Avenue in the Richmond District. This was another riding academy. And notice the station in the background, 7th Avenue. Oh, 1938 in the park. Huge population. The old De Young. I think this is Sam Ziegler. Right, cow catcher, sheep catcher. Making it safe. San Francisco General, a little bit of Petrero Hill and Mission Bay. Late 30s, New Bridge, New Island, sometime in the 50s. You can see the Castro, by the way, in the with a sign flashing. So these are dunes in the city in the 30s, somewhere, don't know where. This is the natural state of San Francisco. And this is Woody and David, about when are we, do you think? 38, 39? So, notice, the neighborhood isn't built up. They're living across from the dunes. This is Easter. Oliver Rousseau, but look at the dunes. Yeah, no kidding.
still in the Western neighborhoods. This is, um, <laughs> this is San Aliso. Can we identify these folks? <laughs> there are hipsters. <laughs> yes, we can, we can stipulate that. <laughs> Wearing the clothing of the future. We're looking, is it Viz Valley, right? Yeah. As our airplane banks. <laughs> Don't get too excited. This is, um, <laughs> these uh, come from the uh, collection of Rad Dewey's family. Just a little bit of the fair in 1940. <laughs> so a year and a half before the war. So, donated by Craig Baldwin, a little bit of the Haight-Ashbury. Look remarkably contemporary. Okay, um, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we are at the beginning of the hippie period here, when um, the Haight hadn't been sort of hippified but I'm open to corrections. Middle Earth. does look like a redevelopment film. <laughs> right, it's Ben and Jerry's, isn't it? <laughs> that corner. <laughs> and night is falling. And what do people do at night in the hate? Yeah. 
You go to a light show. <laughs> Don't know anything about this, where or who or... Performance. And this, now, this looks like the residue of the funeral for the hippie ceremony, the death of hippie. But I wouldn't swear to it. I mean, I don't know. Right. Seal Stadium. I need to find more footage of Seal Stadium, so help me. San Francisco is losing badly. And my tribute to the Giants. Uh, some of you have seen this clip before, and you know, there's a lot of reasons why I like it. First off, it's, um, it's, the, it's the glory and the not so glory of the past. But um, you know, there's, people aren't, there's no heavy merchandising. Here and there, people wear a cap, and. People bring their own orange clothing. Um, uh, no, but um, you know, it's just, it's a very, uh, it's very relaxed. In fact, you'll see at the end, a woman brings her Ritz crackers to the game instead of buying expensive Gilroy garlic fries. This is an outtake from the official San Francisco Convention and Visitors Bureau film. Oh, what do you think? It's 60 sometime, but I don't know when. Early to mid. Yeah, I like the Ritz crackers. Thank you to Jack Tilmany for that beautiful piece. So we have a little bit of, uh, this is not recommended. <laughs> Little bit of uh, new footage of this area and Playland this year. Sky tram. <laughs> I 
What were the years of the SkyTram Western neighborhoods, please? Mid, mid 50s to mid 60s. Wartime, 1944, and rainy. Just a fragment. 30s vintage. That's Sam Ziegler. There's Balboa, the foot of Balboa Street. Let's make a fast getaway. <laughs> this is uh, also an outtake from the lineup. This becomes Clement Street. It's a Point Lobos, the extension of Clement. <laughs> Fort Miley on the right. All right. So this is the first color footage I found of the um, Frank H. Buck and the Ohioan. Shipwreck 1937. Very popular tourist attraction for a while. Yeah, the big one is the Ohioan, right? There's still a piece visible at low tide, right? Piece of the engine block or something. Sutro baths. It ran up on a rock. So, this is the Golden Gate Bridge under construction, again from the Ziegler family films who had amazing access to the bridge. Um, but the diver, just I was delighted to find this.
Souvenir rivet. I think they knew somebody. Uh huh. This is before the rainbow. <laughs> what will possibly the Robin Williams tunnel? <laughs> Watch your toes. And opening day. <laughs> Some of you may remember from past screenings, we won't see this today, but they actually served drinks on the bridge that day. You could buy booze on the bridge as part of the celebration. There was a Western theme, as you may remember, Polk Street was, um, was set up as, a, as a, a, a faux Western town. Business was slow for a while. <laughs> and sometime in the 40s or 50s, we go out to Golden Gate to the Farallons, part of the city of San Francisco and Supervisorial District 1. <laughs> Seriously? Humans aren't supposed to scare the animals, but they do. And thank you.
Thank you for coming, and thanks to everyone who helps make these shows possible.